everyone, it's Julia, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm creating an accent pillow, and I ended up using quite a few different techniques on it, and I thought I'd share it. Um, I'm creating some ribbon here, first of all. And this is just a piece of natural colored muslin that I'm ripping approximately an inch wide piece on. So it's frayed on both sides. I've ripped it on both sides. And I'm using my ink tense blocks and we'll be just coloring different shades of green on this strip. And I'm gonna be applying these ink tense blocks right onto this piece. Now, if you don't have ink tense blocks, use whatever you have. I'm, I'm thinking a wa watercolor would even work on this. Maybe you have pastels or, or something, just getting some color on there. Again, just using different colors of greens. I'm gonna, this is gonna, I want it to look something like grass, and that's kind of my intent right now. Just removing some of the strings there. If you if you happen to go over the top of a string, it's going to leave that mark on there. So I'm I'm trying to um, just be careful of that. And again, just adding all the way down this piece of muslin. Now I have a larger brush, um, a round brush, and I'm really soaking it with water. Many times when I use ink tents on fabric, I will activate with a fabric medium, but I'm out of it right now, and so I'm just using water, and that's going to be just fine for this project. I'm, I'm just not going to be, be washed. I mean, most of my pillows I recommend spot washing only. This is gonna be filled with fiber fill, and if you throw it in the washing machine, it just doesn't, it just doesn't ever turn out quite the same as you throw it in. Um, so I'm not being concerned about that, and I'm just activating really well with water. I have a piece of warm and natural cotton batting here, and I'm just spraying some adhesive on it. This is a, a temporary adhesive for sewing or quilting adhesive. I am going to be listing everything down below for you in case you're interested in some of my supplies. Just putting a piece of cotton on the top and the bottom here. I'm gonna be using my new Biggs die that I just recently picked up, and it's a dragonfly die, and then just a variety of fabrics. And using my heat, heat and bond light that I always seem to use, and just applying a little bit of that on the back side of these fabrics. I wanted to mention that that polka dot bundle there, that's a fat quarter bundle that I just recently picked up at Hobby Lobby. Um, and I think it's still available in most Hobby Lobbies if you have that in your area. I have my, my adhesive side down and I am putting this heat and bond light on the back side of my fabrics. And these will be run through my Big Shot um, on, on that die. You'll see me do that in a little bit, just applying all these. Now I am, I'm laying these pieces on right onto my die, making my sandwich and running it through. And then just popping out those, all these little pieces there's the leaf. Once my ribbon is dried, I take it to my sewing machine and notice I'm just, with my fingers, just ruffling it. Just a really easy way to make a ruffle. I'm not concerned if it's not perfectly even or straight. I'm just getting it, getting it done. And you can see what it turns out like. It's so cute and this is a fun way to add something to your project. I'm thinking grass here for this, but then Okay, I'm completely like don't have a don't have an idea what I'm doing, but I don't like this fabric, and so I'm I'm going to take this off of here. I'll use it in a different project, but I've just decided I'm going to just take a natural colored muslin instead. I'm just thinking it was too bright and it, the design wasn't going to show, or the ribbon wasn't going to show the way I wanted it to, and so now I'm on to Plan B, and I am going to be doing this ink tense through a stencil. Um, I have a, just a plate there, and I'm using my makeup brushes. Again, these will be listed all down below. Actually, a, a viewer sent these make, makeup brushes to me, and I absolutely love them for these different stenciling projects. It just works really well. So I would give them a try. And again, just pushing that, um, 
that uh, ink tents through that stencil. And now I'm on to doing the same thing with the green. I found, I found a different stencil for my green. Um, and I tell you, my stencils are so old and I, I should make note of what they are, but I don't even think most of them are even still available. Any stencil is gonna work for this. I basically just want the color down and just some interest. So again, pushing that through that stencil And now I've, I've just decided to color right on the stencil just to see how this works. And I really like, this is much better. It just adds more of the color that I'm looking for. And so that is where I ended up. Instead of using that plate, I'm just using the um, right on, to, on the stencil. And my makeup brush is wet at this point, quite wet, because I'm really wanting that to be completely activated. One thing with ink tents to keep in mind is it must be completely wet or activated with either water or the fabric medium um, to make them permanent. And once they're dried, once they're activated and dried, they are permanent, which is just really fun to work with. I'm doing the same thing now going over that blue on the top by adding that blue right on the stencil and then taking my wet makeup and brush and, and pushing that through. I wanna fill in a little more on the white space. So I'm gonna stamp and I'm using my, my Ranger archival inks. These are permanent inks, which work great for fabric. And I'm just gonna stamp, these stamps I'm using are um, old Un Unity stamp by the Unity company. And these are basically just background stamps. This is a bubble, uh, but any stamp would work for this. Just just to give a little bit of an impression or to fill in. And this one is a little ditty, itty bitty dot stamp. You're gonna see it a little bit better in the next um, zoom when I do a close up when I'm finished here. Just adds a little bit more texture to the overall piece. Really like that look. Finally gonna be stitching this ribbon down. I'm just gonna take that to my sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch right down the center of it. Now it's on to just building my scene. I'm just taking that heat and bond light off of the back of these and just adding the flowers and the little centers to the flowers and the leaves. I really like the size of these dragonflies. I know I'm gonna get a lot of use out of this Biggs die. At my sewing machine, I do have just white thread or white bobbin thread in. If your tension is a little off and you can see that bobbin, you might wanna just do use a black thread or the same color thread that you're stitching. I've chosen to do black thread, just drawing on those antennas on these dragonflies. I'm going to be just outlining these little appliques in a kind of a messy stitch. I'll be going over my stitching twice just to give it that stitched on look and then filling in some of the detail like here I'm going to go up in the, on the wings and just add a little more detail to them. I am going at double speed here so it's a little bit faster than what I am actually sewing. And then I also wanted to show that I'm just going to do a little spiral and then go right into this flower. So I don't have to, I'm traveling basically and I don't have to um, break my thread. And then on to the next one. Almost done here, just cleaning up my edges. I've cut a piece for the back of my pillow, just a little bit bigger than my other, of, of my, a little bit bigger than my front. I like to do that just so I don't m miss any stitching. I can just stitch around with the, with the front facing. 
and I stitched around that now cleaning up my corners and just turning this right side out getting those corners poked out I'm going to be sticking a little pokey tool or my little stick in there in a little bit here just to get those corners out and then to roll those seams and to get it pressed really well And then it's on to one final pressing. I am just going to turn those that opening in and that'll be stitched in the final um, stitching. I'm going to link my video for you on how I finish my my pillows. I just I just use my sewing machine to finish this little opening after it's stuffed and I'll link that video. It's a real quick one. I hope you enjoyed this everybody. This was just a fun project to get me in the mood for spring. Something bright and cheerful. Um, and I have some pictures at the end here that I um, for you. Just some close-ups. You can kind of see my stitching and I just really like this watercolor ribbon. I hope you have a chance to give that a try. It's really fun. I did have enough of my product and enough of my ribbon left to make a little journal cover. Pretty much the same little fabrics, just really interesting little um, journal. I hope you enjoy this everybody. Have a great week. Hope you have a chance to create. Bye for now.